Torquay is this week's stop for the Antiques Roadshow in 10 minutes at 6 o'clock. First on BBC One at 10 to 6, the news with Jan Leeming. Solidarity's May Day rallies broken up on the streets of Poland. Tens of thousands had turned out for anti-government demonstrations in Warsaw and other major cities. They were met with baton charges, tear gas and water cannon. Tim Sebastian in London has been watching the latest pictures from Poland. Police had warned the demonstrators in Warsaw not to come onto the streets, but some 10,000 of them ignored the warnings. No one had any doubt what would follow. As so often in Warsaw, the protest began in the narrow streets of the old town outside St. John's Cathedral. It was just after Sunday Mass had ended Poland's second May Day under martial law. Using batons and water cannon, police herded the crowds through the only exit of the old town still open. People chanted, all Poland is with us and we want the truth. These were the largest demonstrations seen in the country for more than six months. It had been a pointed display of civil disobedience, coinciding with one of the most important dates in the communist calendar. But it's become almost a ritual. Out came the demonstrators and the police, then followed the beatings and the arrests. This is a continuing problem for the government, unsolved by 18 months of military rule. Less than a mile away, the official May Day celebrations were in progress. Poland's leader, General Jaruzelski, was offering the people a different message. He spoke of the chances for lifting martial law if peace could be consolidated. On today's evidence, though, that doesn't seem likely. In Moscow, hundreds of thousands of people attended the traditional May Day parade. Party leader Yuri Andropov was flanked by Politburo colleagues as he waved to the crowd. Ambassadors from most Western countries stayed away in a continuing gesture of protest at Soviet intervention in Afghanistan. Many of the floats in the parade carried anti-American slogans aimed at President Reagan's nuclear policy. But overall, the parade gave prominence to Mr. Andropov's short period of leadership. It was a disappointing day for one of Britain's newest peace groups. Women for Defence, which claims to represent the views of the majority in this country, was set up to counter CND's argument for unilateral disarmament. Today, it had hoped to put its case to the Russians, but they weren't in the listening mood. Brian Hanrahan reports. The leader of the new group, Lady Olga Maitland, went first to the Soviet Embassy to hand in a petition signed by nearly 13,000 people setting out their views. All sides together to reduce arms. We do not uh, support the call for one-sided disarmament. To my mind, that is just complete folly. And let us remain a sensibly defended country. It is a family responsibility to defend our countries properly, and that's what we're going to do. Afterwards, at a sparsely attended rally in Trafalgar Square, Lady Olga said the embassy had refused to accept the petition. When she'd left it behind, they'd called it litter, but she said it would be sent on later by post. The Argentine cargo ship Lago Laca is heading for the South Atlantic, carrying relatives of Argentine servicemen killed in and around the Falklands. They'll take part in a memorial service for those who died on the cruiser General Belgrano. John Arden reporting. The Lago Laca has set off for a seven-day voyage. It's widely rumored in Buenos Aires that organizers are hoping for a last-minute diplomatic breakthrough which will allow the vessel to go to the Falkland Islands as originally planned. The 49 relatives on board still don't know exactly where they're going, nor when they'll return. Nor do their friends and families waiting at home. The seven-day voyage is far more time than needed for a simple homage at sea as announced by the Argentine military authorities. Tomorrow afternoon, somewhere in the South Atlantic, the ship will stop to pay homage to the victims of the sinking of the cruiser General Belgrano. 
Her mission then is still unknown. Two rockets exploded near the American ambassador's residence outside Beirut, where the American Secretary of State, George Shultz, was staying last night. Mr. Shultz later said he'd heard the rockets pass overhead, but had gone back to sleep again. Marine guards displayed pieces of a casing and were convinced it had been a deliberate attack. Do you think that the residence then was the target? Yes, I believe they were since they were directly in the flight path of the rockets. The Norwegian Navy has launched another attack on what's believed to be a foreign submarine trapped in the Ardanga Fjord. It's used six-turn missiles to try and force it to surface. The Navy's also checking oil slicks which may have come from the submarine. Prince William is back home after touring Australia and New Zealand with the Prince and Princess of Wales, who are now holidaying in the Bahamas. Tony Scase saw the young prince arrive at Gatwick Airport. For 10-month-old Prince William, it was a tiring 27-hour flight covering 12,000 miles. But when the prince emerged in the arms of his nanny, Miss Barbara Barnes, he seemed happy, contented and even lively. He'd slept for much of the way on the scheduled flight from Auckland. His parents, Prince Charles and the Princess of Wales, had said their farewells to their sleeping son when the plane landed in California. They left for their 10-day holiday in the Bahamas. During that time, Prince William will be with his nanny at Kensington Palace. David Martin, who's on remand in Brixton Prison, has regained consciousness after apparently taking a drugs overdose. Martin, who's accused of attempting to murder a policeman, was found unconscious in his cell yesterday. Prison authorities are now investigating how he obtained the drugs. The wreckage of a wartime hurricane aircraft has been recovered from the seabed off the Dorset coast, and there to see it brought to the surface was the Australian pilot who bailed out just before it crashed 42 years ago. John Andrews reports. The hurricane went down in August 1940, shot down by Measuresmith 109 just west of Portland Bill. The impact as the plane hit the water from 20,000 feet has left it unrecognisable except by small details and serial numbers. The pieces are being recovered by volunteers from the Tangmere Aircraft Museum in West Sussex, including Perry Adams, who located the wreckage and also managed to trace the plane's Australian pilot. He'd shot down two German planes and then dodged an attacker who came at him a second time. I was attacked from below by this apparently the same aircraft who came up underneath and put a burst through the side of the cockpit as I was pulling away to the left. And um, the engine started to run pretty rough and smoke and catch fire, so I decided there was no place to be. And... Recognisable remains of the hurricane, call sign Lima Kilo Victor, will go on display later at the Tangmere Museum. That's all for now. The next news on BBC One is at 9.15. Good evening to you. Well, no better prospects on offer, really. The depression here is going to sit tight, more or less. The front as well, staying over that northern area, keeping persistent uh, rain going. And these easterlies in the north are very cold easterlies, quite strong easterlies in places. And the situation staying much the same. So as far as tonight is concerned, over northern England, perhaps getting as far as the border and into parts of Northern Ireland as well and down this western side a fair bit of persistent rain probably easing off a little bit later on in the night and uh, south of that one or two thundery showers about at the moment that'll die away some clear intervals appearing down here and fairly clear up in Scotland but a cold night in those areas and that cold northeasterly wind in those northern areas especially on the eastern side persisting tomorrow. It'll be quite a cold day there. And still some rain in northern England, perhaps southern Scotland, parts of Northern Ireland and this western side. A dull day there. Some brightness in the south, but showers readily developing and some of those showers fairly thundery. The pick of the bunch tomorrow, western Scotland, dry, some sunshine. Good evening. Programmes for Sunday evening on BBC One. At 7.15, House Calls with Walter Matto as a recently widowed doctor who meets the recently divorced Glenda Jackson. I read in a magazine, over the past 20 years, doctors have become the highest paid income group in the entire country. Uh, Mrs. Atkinson, no offence, but you don't know what the hell you're talking about. Do you know how much it costs to run a medical practice? Take a simple routine checkup. I'd love to, I can't afford one. At 8.50, with three of the four finalists already known, Mastermind arrives at the round to select the highest scoring loser to complete the quartet. At 9.30, that's life, and Esther goes to Glasgow to investigate the latest trend for those with a nose for fashion. Mm. Do you want to go? Yes, darling. I say. Well, that is a 